Airloop is the first team to represent Ireland in the 2018 SpaceX Hyperloop pod competition. After a tough deadline and numerous successful design briefs, they've been invited to SpaceX headquarters and just 19 other teams, of which five are other European countries, they will compete against the fastest Hyperloop pods. Ireland will be represented by a highly skilled team consisting of students from Dublin City University, Dublin Institute of Technology, University College Dublin, Trinity College Dublin, Institute of Technology Carlo, Institute of Technology and Dunleary Institute of Art, Design, and Technology. Putting the combined effort, they aim to prove to the world that Ireland is one of the leaders of innovation, engineering, and technology. Hi, John. Uh, thanks so much, and welcome to In the Hyperloop. Hey, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's great. So I briefly mentioned in the introduction that you're with Airloop. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about Airloop and um, how your role fits into that work and, and your mission with the SpaceX pod competition? Yeah, so basically we're Airloop, we're a team competing in SpaceX's Hyperloop pod competition. We recently entered the finals, we got through the final design brief and uh, completed that kind of design phase of the project. I was originally chief of design for Airloop and mm -hmm. I've since kind of moved away from that as we moved away from the uh, final design stage and now we're looking to build it. Uh, so I'm kind of working on other aspects of the project, like electronics team at the moment, and helping a bit with sponsorship. Well, it's a, it's it's a huge undertaking, and um, you know you kind of have to do all jobs sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes you just gotta you know go with the flow and do what you can to yeah. get where you need to be, like you know. Yeah, and so how did you become interested in Hyperloop? Um, you're in uni, uni right now, but uh, you know how do you balance? uni and hyperloop your interests and stuff uh so basically i uh, becoming interested in hyperloop in the project initially was kind of a coincidence actually i was at a hackathon hack access dublin mm -hmm. at google headquarters oh cool uh, great event by the way and <laughs> what that was essentially was was a hackathon based on the inclusion of disabled people in society and most mm -hmm. access issues are associated with like public transport and how it can mm -hmm. tend to exclude universal accessibility. Mm -hmm. So over the weekend there, I actually met one of our team leaders, uh, Bartek, and he informed me about the concept and he was just uh, like, oh yeah, I love like what we we're doing at the weekend and you know, you were great on your team. He was on a separate team altogether. And uh, he's like, you wouldn't be, you know, interested in joining this little project I have. And I, he informed me a little bit more about it and invited me to come along to one of the meetings. And then I actually loved it. I, I loved it straight away from the very start. I loved the concept behind it. And I just mm -hmm. became really involved with Airloop team. And, you know, from that point onwards, it was just uh, really good. As re as regards um, what you said about like work-life balance or, or rather oh, yeah. Airloop, Airloop life balance is, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's quite, it's actually quite tough. Uh, long day is going and just uh we're a little bit uh we're just just busy at every moment any any second you have spare you have to like really give it your all but i actually love doing it i love doing it well well it's it's really remarkable on top of hackathons that you do uh yeah. you're able to find a little bit more time in the day to yeah. to uh join a hyperloop pod competition team um and you bring up a kind of an interesting topic on accessibility. Um, that's mm. I don't think many other groups have really thought about that. Um, mm. And uh, you know how how would you think uh, Hyperloop might affect people in either a city or in a uh, uh, rural area? In terms of city and rural area, yeah. for accessibility in terms of universal, I believe it will be a lot better because it's. Uh, a contained system overall mm -hmm. so in terms of universal accessibility it's very good but in terms of like how it affects both urban and rural communities is kind of an interesting thing because I feel like a lot of people go with the intent that um, it's it's very easy to get to different places but mm -hmm. it, it does it does create like this uh, greater like international trade and business relations they just become really easy with the interconnectivity of the larger cities especially mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of depends on the overall cost and i know some people have uh, 
idea is that it's you know the, in the original concept it's said to be like twenty five dollars for a ticket or right. something along those lines and yeah. it, it seems it seems a bit skeptical and I mm. feel like it will be slightly costlier cost mm-hmm. it more costly than that mm. um, but allowing for like for example let's see for Dublin to London is mm-hmm. quite a far distance and there's no other way of getting there in a uh, quick time other than by plane right. and I feel like I know I actually know a lot of people who travel from Dublin to London three to four days a week or mm-hmm. even you know five days a week uh, be it like airport travel and oh. you know that kind of the, having a hoop, hyperloop in that kind of a scenario uh, would really add a lot of convenience like mm-hmm. it kind of adds the convenience of, of a train and at a greater speed than a plane so mm-hmm. uh, I think that's huge and uh really opens up a lot of a lot of opportunities uh yeah that would just blow my mind <laughs> i had never thought about that route <laughs> it's uh, it's it's very it's very difficult i think the yeah. the logistics of getting across the sea yeah. are quite difficult and a big challenge but uh it's 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 crazy. a cool one that'd be awesome um mm. so john uh as your role you know that <laughs> has evolved over time uh, what are some yeah. of your challenges um that you faced uh and working on this project uh let's see ah oh, there's been there's been a, so many challenges actually oh. uh, at the moment the the biggest challenge in, that we're facing at the moment is in regards sponsorship hmm. uh we're kind of on a bit of a learning curve most of the team are you know engineers and, and physics students and mm-hmm. you know i'm a computer science student myself mm-hmm. and uh electronic students so it's it's kind of a, a learning curve for us here in the looking for sponsorship and we're trying really hard to uh i don't know get in get into the media and and just mm-hmm. just gain traction around us that you know it's it's something that is is quite challenging but we're we're definitely up to the mark with it yeah and um i'll i'll ask you now uh how can people uh find out information about your group so they can support you um, well, we have our website, uh, airloop.ie, and we have our Facebook page, facebook.com slash airloop, or mm-hmm. at team, air, team underscore airloop on Twitter. Um, and we also have a GoFundMe okay. as well. So gofundme.com slash airloop, I believe is the link. Okay. So, well, yeah. I'm glad. I just want to get that plug in <laughs> for the Hyperloop community <laughs> <All those> plugs. <laughs> to, uh, to help, help Airloop right now. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's definitely you know a challenge for most teams to find sponsorship. What is what are some of the other things that um, you've enjoyed working on Hyperloop or in this kind of new community? Oh yeah, so there's been so many things I've enjoyed. Like just all together, there's been so many things I've learned so much. I've actually learned loads about engineering, mechanics, electronics. Mm-hmm. It's it's been great, and I've I've loved learning every last bit of it. Um, on top of that, my little thing in my own domain as computer science student, mm-hmm. we have a computer vision system uh, mm-hmm. on our pod. So basically two cameras facing up either oh. side. They're looking at the sides of the tube because there are mm-hmm. uh, reflective strips every 100 feet. Oh, right. And basically you would be able to d- determine your proximate speed and telemetry in the tube mm-hmm. uh, based on the time you last saw the other strip. And it is more of a redundancy safety feature for our system because hmm. we have tachometers and, and whatnot determining their speed but basically what it would say uh just is, as a fail safe would be like okay your approximate speed is this or expected to be this you know where you are in the tube mm-hmm. you can like cut the brakes if it doesn't add up you know <laughs> and it's something yeah. that i really enjoyed building myself so that's, and working that's on really it really cool. so. that's yeah and it and it uses uh, video to kind of yeah. determine that, and that's that's really fascinating. I'm I'm sure there's other use cases you could use this in other uh, there's, there's systems. Loads of use <laughs> cases for um, hmm. computer vision, and uh, it's something I really enjoyed, like cool. researching it and building this module now on our pod. So I want to switch gears a little bit um, hmm. and close out with something a little bit more fun. Um, yeah. What what two cities would you like to see connected with a hyperloop, uh, either for people or for cargo or, or just for fun? 
Ah, uh, let's see. I really like the one that was proposed between Amsterdam and Paris. And I, I like the idea of the one I mentioned earlier between Dublin and London, but the logistics of it are a bit iffy, kind of going over the sea. So personally, I'd like to bring it home and say somewhere between Dublin and Galway City. Galway City is this, it's, it's in all the songs, you know, Galway Girl yeah, and yeah, yeah. all those ones. It's a really like communal, small city that it, it's still a city, but it has like, these really good vibes. Everyone there is really nice to each other. And it, it's just a really nice place to be and connected with Dublin, which is the business city of Ireland. And mm -hmm. you just kind of have this really good link between these two cities that can work off each other really well, I think. And I think that'd be really cool to do so. And it's and that distance. I don't know exact distances, but that you know, yeah. on the opposite side of the country, so it's perfect <laughs> for hybrid. It is, it is, yeah. and on, as well as that, uh, it'd take if if it was the proposed system in the Hyperloop Alpha uh, mm -hmm. concept, mm -hmm. it would only take about eleven minutes to get between oh, the two. Goodness! So it's it's actually really really cool that's to think perfect. about. Well, that's mm. awesome. Um, I would I would. I would love that. That would be great. Um, <laughs> and then lastly, you know, if you could ask Elon Musk any question, Hyperloop related or not, what would it be? <laughs> um, do you want to go for a pint? You know, uh, <laughs> I'll pay for first round and you pay for the rest. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, John, thank you so much uh, for taking the time out of your busy schedule from, from Airloop uh, to join me within the Hyperloop. And if you want to learn more about Airloop, please visit airloop.ie. Um, yeah, airloop.ie. Uh, airloop. Thank you very much for having me as well. Cool. Well, cheers. See you then. See ya.